A few years ago, an asteroid slipped past our detection network and came closer to Earth than the moon. We didn't spot it until it was already heading back out into space. Although it wasn't the biggest asteroid, it approached from an angle our instruments barely cover. When the data finally came in, it forced astronomers to recheck other past flybys, and the pattern became obvious fast. Objects this size aren't rare, and once you understand why certain asteroids escape detection, you realize how easily it could happen again. Now this asteroid, which most people don't know about, was named 2019 OK, a 100 meter object. And yet it slipped past every major survey until the very last moment due to its direction. You see, most telescopes that watch for hazardous objects look outward into the night sky. But 2019 OK came almost directly from the sun's direction, the one place our detection systems struggle the most. It was hidden in the glare until it was already halfway past Earth. And once astronomers realized how close it came, they checked the database again and found more cases just like it. Asteroids approaching from low angles. Asteroids coming from the sun's side. Asteroids moving just slow enough or just fast enough to slip through blind spots in our surveys. These aren't the giant planet killers everyone imagines, since NASA tracks those well. It's the mid-sized ones, the ones between 50 and 200 meters that are the real problem. They're large enough to cause regional devastation, but small enough to go unnoticed. What caught astronomers off guard wasn't just how many objects we'd missed, but why we were missing them. The truth is, Earth is only scanning half the sky at any given moment. The other half, facing the sun, is essentially invisible to telescopes on the ground. And that blind zone isn't small. Anything coming from there is practically undetectable. Most of our surveys were designed decades ago, when we thought dangerous asteroids would be bright, obvious, and approaching from deep space. Currently, we are actually watching an asteroid in advance, and it's coming closer than any asteroid of its size in recorded history. Its name is Apophis, which you may have heard of, a 340-meter rock, bigger than the Eiffel Tower, large enough to carve a crater the size of a city, or trigger a regional-level disaster if it ever hit the wrong place. In 2029, Apophis will pass so close to Earth that it will slip under our geostationary satellites, so close you could literally see it with the naked eye drifting across the night sky. Nothing this large has ever come that close in human history. And that's why astronomers treat Apophis like a stress test for the entire planetary defense system. They'll be watching how much Earth's gravity pulls on it, how fast it spins afterward, and whether the rock's trajectory shifts by just a few kilometers, because a small change today becomes thousands of kilometers decades from now. If anything unexpected happens during that flyby, the models change. And if the models change, the long-term risk changes with it. Meanwhile, space agencies are racing to get hardware ready. NASA's OSIRIS APEX mission is already on course to intercept Apophis after the flyby, the first time we'll ever study a potentially hazardous asteroid immediately after it slings past Earth. Because the truth is, once you see an object this large pass that close, everything you thought about rare events starts to look a lot smaller. This is the part that concerns astronomers the most. Apophis is one of the rare cases where we spotted a large asteroid early, tracked it for years, and already know exactly how close it will get. But 2019 OK was the opposite. Same general size range, same destructive potential, and we didn't see it until it was practically next to Earth. If two objects with similar impact energy can behave so differently, one perfectly mapped years ahead, the other arriving with almost no warning, it shows how uneven our detection coverage still is. That's why Apophis matters right now. It's the first large asteroid we'll watch make a deep pass with modern instruments pointed at it the whole time. It gives scientists a chance to see how much a close approach twists an orbit and how sensitive our tracking actually is. That jumps straight to the uncomfortable question. What happens when the next Apophis-sized object shows up but behaves more like 2019 OK? What if the first alert doesn't come years in advance, but days or hours? If a 100 to 300 meter asteroid came from the sun's direction, the same blind zone that hid 2019 OK, the timeline would be brutally short. Most ground-based telescopes simply can't see anything in that glare. To them, the object doesn't exist until it's already close enough to reflect light from a different angle. 
By the time it slips out of the sunlight and into the part of the sky our surveys can actually scan, it might already be inside the moon's orbit. For a mid-sized asteroid moving tens of thousands of kilometers per hour, that leaves days of warning at best. When an asteroid appears with almost no warning, the planetary defense system switches into damage control mode. First, every major observatory starts tracking it at once. They measure its brightness, rotation, and how its orbit changes hour by hour. If it's small enough to burn up, the alert stays internal. If it's big enough to reach the ground, the escalation begins. NASA and the UN's Space Hazard Network run impact simulations within minutes. These models map out where it could hit and how much energy it would release. Governments get those predictions long before the public ever hears about them. But the uncomfortable truth is, if a 100 to 300 meter asteroid appeared from the sun's direction with only days of warning, we wouldn't have time to deflect it. The only realistic option would be evacuation. Thankfully, agencies are rushing to build systems that don't exist yet. NASA's Next Generation Infrared Telescope is designed to look straight toward the sun's direction, where 2019 OK and others slipped through. Because as our detection improves, the goal is to be able to find these asteroids early enough so that we can actually do something about it.